You don't see the mess behind me. Hey y'all, I'm Lynn Howard. Today, we're gonna talk about weird shit every author does. One of the first weird habits every author has, we drink entirely too much coffee. Even if you're not a coffee freak like me, you're still drinking way too much caffeine. Admit it, admit it to the world, admit it to yourself. You're drinking too much tea, too much soda, too much coffee. Number two, we have way too many pens and or way too many notebooks. I once had my nephew tell me that I should use one of my thousand notebooks. Put it to use, he said. I don't buy notebooks to use. I buy them because they're pretty and even if they're not pretty, I feel like I have an ample stock in case I ever need one. Third thing we do, we talk to imaginary people. Now, if you're a plotter, more than likely you don't actually have these conversations in your head. But on an average day, one of my conversations goes like this. You're going to be this guy. No, I'm not. I'm going to be this guy. You're a bad guy. I'm a good guy. They argue with me over what I want them to do and what they want to do. Now, obviously that's my subconscious and the creative side of me, but it feels real sometimes like you're really arguing with the person, not like, a, you know, we're not exactly insane, but it feels like you're arguing with a person. And I very rarely get what I want from this conversation. Every author does it, even the plotters still have conversations and argue with the characters they've created. Please don't say you don't. Please don't say you don't, because then I might actually feel like I am crazy. A fourth weird thing we do, we act out scenes and or dialogue. I'm real good at trying to figure out where the punch is coming from or if I'm typing that they're grinning or their eyebrows shut up. I tend to make the faces. Now I don't always mean to, but I tend to act out what I'm writing, whether they're frowning or eyebrows are up or eyes wide. And for some reason when I'm typing, I can't chew. I don't know. I can be chewing and snacking and I stop chewing when I'm typing. I don't know. But we act out the scenes because we want to know you know, what's it like when they're going to grab him by the throat? Where is that going to hit? And I may or may not have had my husband grab me a few times so I could see where a left-handed person's hand would go or a right-handed person's hand would go. Or where a fist would hit when a left-handed person hits you, things like that. And of course, he's never hit me. Don't be writing in. He's never hit me. But it's easier to pick apart a scene if you can act it out. A fifth thing we do, we obsess over the characters' names. You know, you can have the common names, of course, Michael, Jeffrey, Gregory, Jason, but sometimes I need something a little bit more meaningful. I have a baby, or if she's now a toddler in, the, in this world, named Rika. Now that sounds kind of like Reek. Rika means wolf. I had to use it. I had to pick it. We will sit and go through baby names lists and popular names and meaningful names and biblical names. I've been known to take hours to try to find the perfect name for one of my characters at times. Do you know how many characters I've named and I can't name an animal? I can't name a pet? I have a cat named Boy Cat. I had fish named Bluefish and Redfish. I don't know. A sixth thing we do is bounce back and forth from an excessive ego to crippling self-doubt. I am the best writer in the world. This sucks. No one's ever going to read it. I know this is a bestseller. Why did I ever try to make a career out of writing? It's normal, it's weird, but it's normal. I think we all go through it. Every person has self-doubt in every position and career in the world. It's normal, it's weird, but it's normal. Seventh weird thing we do, some of our best friends, some of the friends that truly understand what we're going through are online. One of my best friends in the world is my editor and we've never met in person. We've talked on the phone, we've messaged, we emailed, we text, we text every day, all day. We've never met in person and she is one of my favorite people in the whole world. It is hard to try to explain to your mother or your best friend why you're so frustrated by a certain plot or why the naming is so difficult because they're not writers. They don't get these weird nuances that is being a writer. An eighth weird thing we do, we daydream and we interrupt conversations with plots. I can be zoned out trying to listen to my husband and something will hit me and I'll blurt it out right in the middle of his sentence. And of course, he's patient. He understands he's been going through this with me my entire career, but some people may not and they may look at you like extremely rude. It's not, I mean, I guess it is rude, but it's not like we're doing it on purpose. It's just part of our little weird quirks. We get so fixated on our stories and so engulfed by these characters' lives. We just spit the shit out and we have to purge it. We have to get it out and figure out where we're going. So we flop back and forth from daydreaming, zoning out, staring into space while we're writing in our head to blurting out the scene in the middle of wherever you are. It's weird, but it's normal. A ninth weird thing we do, we research some weird shit. I have researched 
fake plastic guns you can get into courthouses, they don't exist, so don't look them up. I've researched how to make a bomb out of natural chemicals. I have researched how to hide a body and hide the smell of decomposition. We research some weird shit. But it's all stories. Hopefully if the FBI ever puts me on a watch list, they'll see that all these weird things don't actually connect to each other and they'll realize that I'm just a writer and won't like have people showing up at my house with guns and black sunglasses like on TV, but we research weird shit. Everybody does. Every writer does. Because frankly, if we only wrote what we knew, books would be so freaking boring. We can become experts on just about anything nowadays with the invention of Google. And the 10th thing we do, we tend to flop back and forth between forgetting to eat all day and snacking on extremely unhealthy crap all day. I had sun chips. I guess those aren't extremely unhealthy, but I'll snack on candy or chips and then I'll flop over to bananas or grapes or two days in a row I'll forget to eat until like six o'clock and I feel like shit, oh wait because I forgot to put anything in my body except for coffee and soda. Everybody does it, we get in the thick of things, we forget what we're doing. So that was part one of Weird Shit Authors Do. There will be a part two next week, so make sure you stay tuned. In the meantime, Shift and Priority is still available for pre-order on all outlets, and it's being released on September 25th, and I'm getting so freaking excited. And in other news, I got my podcast cover completed today, the graphic, for my upcoming podcast. So stay tuned for that news. I'll let you guys know when it'll finally go live. Till next time, bye. You don't see the mess behind me. Whatever I've been. <laughs> Say hi to YouTube. What? I'm sitting here telling people they should turn their ringer off. My freaking phone's ringing.